Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this afternoon, we're returning to a conventional reel that we're working on here today. So this is the Pen 210, and uh, I, I just did a separate disassembly video for this reel, and I just spent a great deal of time actually uh, restoring uh, so, some of the luster in this reel, some of these chromed pieces and whatnot. Uh, so just a lot of time uh, cleaning uh, with the help of some penetrating oil, some 4 steel wool, uh, some other things like some uh, rubbing compound here, and uh, sponges, uh, non-scratch sponges, things like that. Q-tips, toothbrushes, brass wire brushes, you name it, all those kinds of standard household type things that you have kicking around in your garage and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, it's cleaned up really nicely, and so this video is going to be for the reassembly of this reel. So we've gone through all these pieces and parts here, and so now we're going to we're gonna go back in here, and we're going to get some pen precision oil appropriate for this reel, and some pen precision blue grease as well. I'm going to take the cap off of this because we're definitely going to be using it. Okay, and we're going to... Get these pieces and parts back in here. We're going to start with a little bit of blue grease here on our level wind gear. Okay, you want to check this plastic gear in here as well. Uh, they do have a tendency to crack and chip and whatnot. And if they do, you need to replace that as well. Okay. I'll set that back down in there like that. So I'm just going to do just a little bit of grease on top here, just for good measure. Okay, now we do have a bearing down here. These bearings are really not serviceable bearings, and so I just inspect them, make sure that they look okay, and then I'll take a little bit of pen precision oil. I've already hosed this down with a bunch of penetrating oil, more or less, but let that work its way in there. It will seat down in there in time, okay? And then we'll do a little bit of blue grease here on our clicker tongue as well. Okay. Okay. And we're going to put our ring back on. Line these holes up here accordingly. Yeah, I did spend a great deal of time shining up these rings, though, the best that I could, all these chromed pieces, and they came out pretty good, actually, for the most part. I've seen some of these reels, they're just, you know, they're just covered and covered in pitting and corrosion and whatnot, okay? And uh, before the video's over, we'll talk a little bit about how uh, you can prevent some of those things, of course. Uh, you know, it's basically just some simple tactics of of cleaning, you know, when you're done using the reel. Okay, so we've got our frame posts here, and then our level wind post, and all these need to go back in, of course, as well as our stand mount. We're going to start with the stand. Okay, so this should go down here at the base like so. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little dab of oil here on these holes, on those threads there, and then we've got some screws here that have been soaking in some penetrating oil for a little while. We've got two shorter screws here and then three longer ones here. Okay, and the shorter ones are the ones that we need for the base here. I'm gonna line this up here, get one of these started. But the reason for that oil is to prevent any further rust or corrosion that may have already begun, so to speak. You want to make sure you put a stop to it. 
Is the problem is, is when fishing reels sit in your garage or your shed or on the boat or wherever, uh, you know, if they have rust and corrosion that's already begun, well, it'll continue unless you, you know, take preventative measures to stop it, basically. So, so we've got two frame posts here. We'll do that little dab of oil here. We're definitely going to take our time with this one when it comes to the oiling and whatnot just because this reel did suffer some damage in that department and we want to make sure that that just doesn't continue. Okay. Same thing here. Yeah, you know, when you're done using any fishing reel, especially in salt water, you want to rinse it off with fresh water right away. Normally, warm, fresh water and some mild soap detergent goes a long way, too. Okay. It's just, you know, some basic household stuff, you know, nothing fancy. Just going to take a little bit more. Foro steel wool here to this level wind post here. Okay. And we're going to go back with this. You want to make sure that this slot underneath here is clear and free of any debris. You also want to make sure that it's aimed downward and you're not going to want to over tighten this too much. You're going to want to tighten it somewhat snug, but enough so that you can gently move it and tweak it because you're going to need to do that eventually. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready for the next couple of pieces and parts here. So we've got our spool. We've cleaned it up really nice. Came out very, very good. We took some 4 steel wool to the shaft here. It's in good shape. We're going to take some of that blue grease to the shaft as well as these gears and teeth here on this side as well. Okay. And that is going to go back into position like so. And we'll just have that ready kind of on standby here while we get these other pieces and parts here. Now, <clears throat> I did end up taking apart the pieces here in the level wind mechanism, as I call it. All this, it was necessary to take all these pieces apart. So you got a shield here. You got your level wind wire. Okay. You got a worm drive. And then you've got a pawl right here with the teeth that stick out that run through this worm gear, okay? Kind of difficult to see here on camera, all right? But that's that's how that works, okay? And that's what makes that line roller go back and forth. And then there's this capture here that it sits in. So you want to inspect this pawl, okay, for any rust or any wearing or anything. If those teeth don't look even, all right, it needs to be replaced, all right? But this looks like it's in pretty good shape here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to flood this house here with a little bit of oil. We're going to put that back into position like so. And I'm just going to do another little bead on top there just for good measure. Okay. And then I'm going to put just a little run of oil across here. Okay. We've cleaned up all these pieces and parts the best that we can. All right. So that's in good shape now. Okay. Now, when you go to put this back in, you want to use caution, okay, because it needs to sink up in the groove. And if it doesn't, okay, don't force it. And you'll know if, if you feel it 
you know, tightening up, but the screw isn't pressed all the way down. And all you need to do is just kind of fidget it one way or another until it lines up right and gently turn the screw and you'll get it synced up eventually. Okay. I think it's going in right there. Okay. So that's all you should need to do there. Okay. I'm just going to put a little bit of blue grease here on the end here. I don't like doing grease on these worm gears. I find that it it slows them down considerably. And they collect a lot of debris and dust and whatnot. And so it's best that, uh, that you don't use grease on them, I find. The oil's usually better. And then we're going to put our shield in place here. This is a little difficult to see on camera. It'll make sense once we get back to the rest of the reassembly here. But I'm just basically prepping these pieces and parts here, more or less. Okay. So we're just going to leave that like that for now. Okay. We're going to put it off to the side here. All right. Now we're going to focus on the handle side. Okay, so we've cleaned this up really, really well using some degreaser and some penetrating oil and just cleaning all this out, this whole housing out completely. Okay, we have a ball bearing right here. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to flood just a little bead of oil in here for that bearing to sink down into. Okay. And we're going to need uh, the help of a punch here, I believe. And then we're going to do a little bead of oil on top of that. Let that soak its way in. Okay. So now, the rest of these pieces and parts here. So we've gone through our bridge assembly. We've cleaned this off with some 4 steel wool. Make, make it nice and smooth. We've cleaned this out with Q-tip and all that. Okay. Now here... I usually like to use grease on this shaft here. And we'll put this back in there. And you need to open up your dog spring so that the dog pulls out like that. Okay, now don't forget that small pin that needs to go back into position here. And a lot of the time I find you have to give it a small tap, a light tap with a hammer. It should go back in just like so. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our drag stack down here ready to be assembled. Okay, so we've got our red spacer washer that goes on first, and then we've cleaned up our, our gear set. This is how you get that four to one gear ratios with that nice big gear set. Okay, we'll slap that on there. Now these washers here, we're gonna wanna take some Cal Star drag grease to these carbon fiber washers here and just do a light film of these on each side. And we're just gonna put them in one by one. Got a metal washer here. You only need to put it on the fiber washers themselves. You don't need to do it on the metal washers. It'll work its way in. You know, if you find that this is a keyed washer here, if you find that the carbon fiber washers need to be replaced, if they're cracked or frayed too much or just worn out, then uh, definitely replace them. This one looks like it's starting to wear just a little bit, but it's not too bad. Still got a little bit of life left in it. You know, the goal with this reel is to make it functional and as pretty as possible. You know, if you're going for pretty, you know, for showroom applications and stuff like that, well, then there's definitely parts and pieces that should be replaced, you know, but that's not, that's not what we're doing here today. You know, we're not looking to dump a bunch of money into the reel unless it's absolutely necessary. So that's our drag stack, okay? So now, I'm going to just gently put that off to the side here for a moment. 
And then we're going to do a quick inspection here. We're going to take some blue grease here to our eccentric roller right here. Okay, as well as in here. Okay. And then we've cleaned up our pinion gear and pinion yoke. Our springs. We're going to put a little bit of blue grease here. As well as on the pinion gear. Okay, we're going to put those springs back in the two holes that they belong in. We'll take our pinion yoke, and then we got our eccentric lever here. And we're going to gently press down on there, like so. And it should come together and look something like that. Okay. Now we're ready to go back with our main gear and you want to make sure that you get some blue grease on your gear teeth here. You don't want to get it on the drag stack, okay? You only want this on the gear teeth. So just take your time. Now a lot of the time working on fishing reels, it's just about taking the time to do it right. And, you know, if you're in a big hurry or something like that, it's it's probably best just to wait until you have ample time to do it, you know, because the details do matter, okay? It should look something like that. That'll work its way into all the teeth, of course, all right? And then this is where it gets a little tricky, but you just want to gently press that in, roll your bridge around gently, I always like to make sure that this spins smoothly before I start attaching any of these bridge screws. Okay, so we've got two partially threaded, two fully threaded screws. They've been soaking in some penetrating oil, so there's no need to put any extra bead of oil on those really, not really necessary. And we're just gonna gently screw these in here. Do not want to over tighten these ever, but they should be snug. So just gently tighten these up one by one. Just want to do like a one eighth turn after they're somewhat snug, okay? All right, so that's in good shape there. Now, we'll put our ring back on. Clean this up really well. Line our holes up here. Okay. So now we're ready to come back to this assembly here. And this can be pretty tricky at times. Ready to put some screws back in here. So remember we've got two longer ones that go at the base. These have all been soaking in some penetrating oil for a while, so they should be ready to go back in. And we'll get these others lined up as well. You just want to get a couple of these started. Like so. And a lot of the time what ends up happening 
when you put a level wine back together sometimes is it's it's not going to be quite lined up just right so you don't want to tighten all these down so to speak you want to leave them just gently loose so that you can adjust the reel gently okay be able to gently tighten this up but you don't want it to turn with the screw okay And we'll just go back here and double check our work. Something like that. Okay. So make adjustments to your frame screws and also make sure that you make adjustments here with this thumb screw accordingly. Okay, so you should be able to just spin the spool gently and you should be able to see that that worm gear moving back and forth gently. Okay, so now for the finishing pieces here, we've got our sleeve that goes back. And I didn't spend any time cleaning up these pieces and parts here, but I figured I'd save it here for the end. So, you know, these are in pretty good shape, the handle and the star wheel as well as the handle nut here. Okay, there's really not too many signs of, uh, of pitting damage or anything per se, but just to show you what I did for the shining part, and I've got separate videos on restoring these kinds of pieces. You can check that out on the YouTube channel, but just take a little bit of that mild abrasive. You can use chrome polishes or mag polish. I'm just using this rubbing compound because it kind of cuts through a little better, I find, than some of the other products that I've tried. Okay, but you just do that, okay? And make sure that you're using a non-scratch sponge, usually. Whatever it is, you want it to be mild in terms of how abrasive it is because you don't want to scratch the metal, okay? But it'll basically shine, shine up your pieces there, so to speak the best that you possibly can but once again these pieces are not in that bad of shape so we're not too concerned with it really okay we'll put our star wheel back on here we we'll to make sure that this is seated far enough down so that you can get your handle on top and that it seats all the way completely flush. Okay, and put your your handle nut back into position. Just give that a gentle turn and you need to make sure that this lines up accordingly with that hole. Okay, and then we're just going to do a little dab of real oil on that screw because I have actually snapped these heads off before with poorly you know very poorly uh, maintained reels that are just all rusted and corroded and whatnot okay and then just give that a gentle turn okay and let's uh, let's have a look and see uh, see how we did so Spins real nicely with the drag open. We'll check our free spool. Free spool is nice and smooth. And you can see that the line roller is moving back and forth as it should with that. So that's good. Okay, we'll try out our, our drag here. Make sure our drag is okay. I'm tightening it up bit by bit. Yeah, that's really nice smooth drag. Back that off now, and we'll try our clicker out. Nice, loud clicker. So, so there you have it. That is the Pen 210 ball bearing level wind reel, all serviced and ready to go. So thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please do subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification button. That way you will be getting updates as to when there are new videos coming out. And we'll see you next time.